usually get behind a podium like a teacher, which I was for 23 years, <laughs> and present with a live show. But having the work right here and my audience close, don't uh, hesitate to ask a question. It doesn't have to be formal or just any time. Um, or you can wait till the end or not.
Breonna Taylor as this benevolent figure. And before I, um, the last few years I was teaching, I was writing a book on the imagery of black power. <laughs> Looked at the Black Panther Party, their imagery, um, how they were represented. So this gesture <laughs> was familiar, very familiar to me from, from the late 60s. But I noticed in some of the demonstrations, um, the Black Lives Matter demonstrations around Breonna Taylor, um, George Floyd was killed just shortly after she was. I, um, I, I don't have a, a piece that I that is in tribute to him, but I did some. And I have a website you can go to if you want to see all of it. You probably don't need to write it down, but it's www. One long word, picturingblackpower.com. And then you can see whatever work is in the show that you're talking about. So, um, nothing too much more to say. Um, I have this wrong, like it isn't the memorial to Brianna Taylor. That one has this gesture. This one is the memorial to John R. Lewis. So it, it's, a, it's also, it's probably the second piece I did. I wasn't looking close enough. Yes. But it's another, it's a figure that it's really um, the Lady Corona figure, but she's uh, at a demonstration at Black Lives Matter Project. So it's about the same time. It's still in response to the killings of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, but it's also a tribute to John R. Lewis. And the Black Lives Matter movement at the time was suggesting um, what did he call it? Good trouble. It was okay to cause good trouble, as a, you know. So demonstrate or um, be out in the streets for a good purpose, which is what the civil rights movement had been in in his and many others' estimation. Um, I can do all three of these, and you don't have to get up. This is the lady Corona the comforter figure, without it being. Um, related to a demonstration. You see the crown, you see the gloves, and the face mask. Which, in the beginning, these really solved a lot of problems. Can you imagine how hard it is to do hands? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Because what, what I do, I, I, I stitch whatever the shape is, and then I flip it inside out, and then I sew it down. So little fingers are really tough. I've gotten better over the years, but there's still some limitations. So they all tend to have hands like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it solves a lot of problems. But if, say, one of the fingers didn't exactly work out when I was making the shape, the gloves over it were, were wonderful. And, and with the mask, I, I mean, I do the little mouths you can barely see, and there's a nose. But once I quit using the mask, Making a nose is really hard, <laughs> really, really hard. And I just give a suggestion of it and hope people are okay with that. Anyway, here she is. This one's called In, in Remembrance, Asian Spa. Um, oh, it looks like Ice Spice for some reason. It's like what? Ice Spice. Ice Spice? I want the hair off, the hair off. Well, let, let me talk about this one, and, and I'll tell you why she does. Because <laughs> you're right, that's a good observation. I'll finish this one quickly though, and we'll go to this one. This one is a well-known event. A man, um, let me write it here, goes on a shooting spree at Atlanta massage parlors because he thought the women were too tempting. And I think he killed about eight people. Mm -hmm. So they are mourning, they are in remembrance of those lost by this man shooting. What's your question? Why does that guy look like he's going on a farm making money? The guy? Well, let me tell you who the guy is. He looks like okay. Al. He looks like Al to me. Can you see, everybody? Okay. All right, I'm a retired college professor. I'm no longer writing books or articles or giving talks. Or I'm now a full-time fabric artist. <laughs> but I had one lingering project. I was doing an essay on Images of Angela Davis. Do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. So that's 
that's why the Afro and this look. It's a portrait of, of Angela Davis as she would have looked in 1971. This is a portrait of Jonathan Jackson. She was um, accused of murder and kidnapping because it was her gun that this young man in 17 used to grab some hostages at a courthouse in Marin County what, in what ended as a shootout. He wanted to get the hostages and then barter with with the prison system for them to give him his brother George Jackson. It's a famous story and if you have any interest, you can look it up. But I wanted to uh, note uh, her, um, so she's arrested. She hadn't done it. <laughs> she was eventually acquitted, but she spent 18 months in, in jail going through the trial process. and. People sent flowers because roses were her favorite flowers. They sent pictures of flowers. And a worldwide Free Angela Defense Committee came into being. And it was on my mind, I'll just say. So it's, it's partly uh, um, responding to my career as, a, as an author of a book on the Black Panthers and uh, long-term interest in imagery of black power. Okay, any, any questions? Let me stop, because uh, I'm just chatting, chattering away. Any, anybody want to ask anything more about the, any of these three? We'll, we'll need to move to that section. It's not a question, but I really like how um, like you have details of like the story, like the Black Panthers like up on the top. Yeah, and stuff. I think that's really cool, of like the different elements while like having a story. and like. All the roses kind of fit into like her dress and stuff. I think that's really beautiful. I, I, some of this just evolved rather yeah. than here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I think I, I more work from intuition than analysis, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and so part of it is solving a design problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then the design problem, what's, what's the, the, the phrase? Form is function, mm -hmm. I think. Something like that. <laughs> and it solves a design problem. Problem, but it also kind of expresses a fragmentation in some of the work I like that. I don't like everything like really solid nailed down. And um, that the dress isn't real defined. It's because this is 1971. There's a there's a distance of time, but I I, I it all weaves into the fabric better. I don't want the power to the people to be screaming out at you. But I want if someone spends time with it that they see that as kind of a, the, the phrase of the time. And such as the little silhouettes. I, some of my other work, uh, I put policemen in that position. Um, I did a work on, on the border and families, and I used the image of the, an image on the sign of look out for migrants crossing. It's the family running. It's just little suggestions that that place it into some kind of narrative. I, I, I appreciate that you noticed that. Um, he was, his brother was one of, they were called the Soledad brothers, and I, I won't go too into this history, but that does help explain, say the Soledad brothers. She was very close with this teenager in a committee to try to get the brother and two others, not quite out of prison, they were in prison, but to get their case brought before people's attention, they had been accused of murdering a guard. They hadn't pr probably done it because they don't seem to have been anywhere near where that happened. But, but these three men in prison were very political. They had afros. They, they were um, devotees of the Black Panther Party. So they were targeted for their political political activity or political um, ide ideas and um, accused of the murder of the guy. So, ready to move? Oh, yes ma'am. I just, I just have one more thing to add. The, I love the details of the um, Declaration of Independence Thank that you. you have in the background. It like really has a nod to the having to be a trial and the government's mm -hmm. involvement and everything. I love that background. I used it a couple of times. I think it's in this, but yeah, because you know, it, we have a, a democracy, we have a, this system, 
And it's there for everybody. And even though she was accused, I mean, the system was there for her. And just a reminder of all politics isn't just, I don't know, the presidential election or, or what we believe. But it's a wide thing, and, and there could be lots of viewpoints. OK, now we win. Bring it here. <laughs> How are we? Um, we may, there's this one briefly, and then we can go to the end. Uh, I don't know um, where. I think you guys could probably swing around in here. You've seen them, and you don't necessarily need to be right in front, but you're welcome to move however you want. So here's another chair. Does anyone have one? Charles, you want a chair? No. Any, anybody not come to get a chair? <laughs> Ready? Yep. Ready? Okay. <laughs> All right, just briefly this one, then, then we'll swing back. This is called um, Justice for All. Mm. And uh, Again, it, I used, uh, where's our question there? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and I, I it, this was an early piece. So I, it, I was working like a collage. And there's all these steps that got, I, all this work that all got covered over. Now I know better. Now I don't do all of it. I know where the, you know, it's like a puzzle I'm putting together. But then, so I'm using this wonderful, uh, we, the Declaration of Independence um, as a back preamble, I guess it is. Anyway, it, it, it's, it's not so apparent, but it's supposed to be the Supreme Court done kind of almost um, cartoony. And it's in tribute to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, you guys were real, like, I'm, I'm referring to events that are, to me, like yesterday, but it's four years ago now. Right. Mm. And you were probably not listening to the news, or were you? Oh, no. Were you? No. I think so. Yeah, okay. Well, a couple years from now, I'll have to say that. But you're, you guys are still, <laughs> still with me on this. But the night she died, does anyone remember? Did it, was it on TV? Yeah. Oh. Remember what happened? No. Well, what happened was, People spilled into the streets, mm -hmm. right? That's all I'm after with that. <laughs> a lot of things happen. But um, just this outpouring, just, and for, especially at the Supreme Court. And the, I found the pictures really moving. And I started kind of collecting images. And uh, the one, women, women hugging, people hugging, fathers with their little girls on their shoulders so they could see the Supreme Court. Um, all kinds of, um, I mean, everyone, all kinds of people. At, and there were certain uh, ones I found especially poignant, as you know, some of her decisions were deciding decisions, or at least she was a strong voice in favor of marriage equality, um, women's rights, and a host of other things. So I picked the marriage equality as my theme, and I did find a nice picture of, of young men you know, like hugging each other in, in, in a group, and um, my my tech, my what my abilities, my technique, my intuitive working, sort of makes them look almost young. <laughs> but it's it's a, just see it as a style <coughs> that probably looked a lot different as I recall the photograph. But I wanted a representative grouping um, that expressed one aspect of her career. Here we have Lady Corona. I guess you can recognize her now. Mm -hmm. Mask, gloves, crown. Uh, many of them, I, I just favor the heart. It's a, it's a symbol I've always liked. So I usually try to find a way to get a heart on a woman. Mm -hmm. So it's Lady Corona joining um, this group uh, in, re in remembering Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Any questions? Because I'm going to move over. I love the angel and the lace work at the top to add more femininity to her 
Well, it's subtle. You know how she always wore that lace oh, yes. collar? Yeah, and I wanted something, but if it was too much, it, it was a touchy thing how to get it. And I wasn't ever terribly happy with it, but then I think I, I grew to be, because it, I don't know. I, I think it was just it. enough as it yeah. turned out. Because, I mean, you saw it. You see yeah. the connection without mm -hmm. it being sure. real in your face. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, if, I don't know if you want to film. You could be there. There's not a lot to say yeah, uh, okay. about this one. Don't I'm worry about me. I'm but I'm pretty happy with it. I did two works. Um, the, the Ukrainian invasion, of, the invasion of Ukraine, I don't remember the exact date it started, but that, you can see what I'm doing here is responding to events that are happening, especially while I was confined to home, but then it got to be a pattern. I mean, I'm no longer confined to home, but I mostly spend all day sewing there, <laughs> and I'm still responding to events that events that upset me. Or, uh, it's not just something happened, I should do it. It's something that irks me or it, it, it impacts me that I feel I need to speak about. And so the war in Ukraine with all those in the beginning, all these pictures of mothers with little children crossing the border, <coughs> people with their pets. We don't see those anymore. It's gotten enormously more hideous and, and the pictures aren't that anymore, but in the beginning you saw people leaving on the train, Poland took people in, and that, as, a, as an image in the news, I, I, I thought I, I could perhaps make a comment using some of that imagery. And in my looking around, I found pictures of brides, Ukrainian brides, which isn't this one, mind you, it's not here, but it, you can see it on the website, where these beautiful, Crowns of all these flowers, like like layers, like halos of of flowers, and they're just gorgeous. And I was, I, I thought that's beautiful. So I made, I call her Ukrainian mother. It, she's not a bride, but she's got the bride headdress, and she's got her baby and her child and their pet, and the child has a teddy bear against this horrible gray background. I was pretty happy with how that turned out. While I was looking around, I, I found a picture of this dog. His name is Patron. And he became kind of a, I don't know, national hero. Because he was a bomb sniffing dog. And people in Ukraine and I don't know, maybe elsewhere were putting him on t shirts. And, and I thought, well, I, I wanted to comment on the war, but I don't want to, you know, I wanted it somehow hopeful, somehow, something with uplift. And so I thought, well, I need to do the dog. And so that's a portrait of, of the dog. And it, the title is Ukrainian Bomb Squad. <laughs> OK, now we're moving up to the present. Um, this one is still, it's a representative of a type of work of which there are several. If you like to consult the website, you will see I um, did commentary on George Floyd. There's two works. That are respond that they're not of him, but they're in response to to his being killed. I did um, something called Elegy for Elijah for Elijah McLean, who had been killed in um, Aurora, Colorado. And this one is Almond Arbor. Um, he wasn't killed by policemen, by a retired policeman, his son. He was out jogging in Brunswick, Georgia. Maybe you remember this story. Yeah. Yeah. So that one uh, captured my attention. And here's this innocent person jogging, and and three guys in, the, in their pickup trucks running down. I mean, it's like from the 50s or the 40s, but it's not. It was today. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I don't know. I wanted, this is kind of a lady corona figure, I guess you can recognize by now. Crown mask, gloves, got a heart on her jogging outfit. But I thought I would uh, create a, a memorial run for Ahmed Arbery. So I wanted it to have a look of Brunswick, Georgia, thus the palm trees and the sort of blue. And the, usually I, I was usually putting 19 flowers 
COVID-19. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just solved a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. what am I gonna put there? Oh yeah, nice and flowers. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that was, th there's a body of work that is commenting on um, police shootings, if you will. My most recent work is these two. And there are now a series of 16 works of, of each of the 19 children killed in Uvalde. Each one portrays a child with something personal to that child. A couple of them have two children in them, so that's why it's 16 works instead of 19. And I hope to be showing the group, now that they're finished, as of January, I finished the last one, I uh, hope to show them that it, as a group, one big room with all these children. Mm -hmm. I do hope it will be impactful. Oh, sure. This one is Amory Jo Garza. She was, um, she had a, a new phone she got gotten for her birthday. Oh, okay. And she had it with her that May 24th, 2022, when that, the shooter was in their, their school for an hour mm -hmm. while various police organizations numbering 360 were either out in the hall or mm -hmm. on site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she called 911. Mm -hmm. And again, and again. Mm -hmm. And by calling 911, I don't know, it must make some noise, but it alerted the shooter. So, um, it's a tragic story at multiple levels, and the, the gold, uh, and not gold actually, the green with gold writing, shawl, is uh, to um, bring attention to the Girl Scouts who awarded her, I need to look, it's, like, I think it's called a bronze medal, which an award that a Girl Scout gets for risking her life uh, to save others. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, also from the Uvalde series, is fairly straightforward. It's a little boy. He wanted to be a policeman. But, um, the irony of this thing is me. He wants to be a policeman. He's killed inside a classroom while policemen wait outside for him and let it happen. But he wanted to be a policeman. And he was, you know, a rowdy little kid, regular normal little kid. He wasn't that good in school. And he was told, well, you know, if you want to be a policeman, you better get good grades so you can go and study to be a policeman. So he knuckled under and he made the honor roll that day, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the pictures have honor roll, you know, this event had just happened. And then the shooting. So that's why he's holding up his plaque of just making the honor roll. That's why the hulking blue figure over his shoulder. It's not meant to be ominous, but it kind of is also. Um, and I started putting teddy bears, because people brought teddy bears to the memorial sites. He was a regular little kid. I saw a picture of his bedroom, and there was this big truck at the foot of the closet, and I thought, we could in truck. People brought roses to each, pretty much, yeah. I tried to get a rose in each picture, because there were people, I mean, again, outpouring of, of emotion, people bringing roses to the site, one for each one, um, pink teddy bears, gray teddy bears, lots of flowers and just candles. So um, that's pretty much the more recent, and that's time for questions. Last call, <laughs> last call, yes. Um. This piece in particular, I want to tell you, was extremely impactful for me, uh, especially because I had to was writing about it um, and reading and finding out, like you said, the irony of the fact that he wanted to be a police officer and they failed him. They mm -hmm. literally failed yeah. him. Mm -hmm. um, what was your, like, when you did the silhouette of the police officer, what did you have in mind for the meaning of that? I wanted it, I wanted to somehow include it because of his, his right. goal. Right, right. And I had a lot of trouble doing the silhouette of a police officer, getting the hat right. And and it continued, I, I think, to feel a little ominous. And I just kind of left it. 
I love it. No, I personally, I see it as more so he's the one in the spotlight. He is the one that we should be recognizing. Mm -hmm. He is the real hero here. Just like that little girl over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I cried. I cried a little mm -hmm. bit while writing about him and this piece because it's just, it's absolutely terrible and it breaks my heart. But when you said that, you hope that these, um, your pieces of these will be impactful. Absolutely. Yes. You don't need to doubt that. <laughs> there is no doubt that you will definitely have some tears because mm -hmm. these are absolutely beautiful pieces. And I just put, you know, this this caption under just a little personal. You know, everyone's known a ten year old. You right. don't have to give them the whole story to know right. they're someone precious. Mm -hmm. But just a little something. One of the girls' father was a policeman called to the site. Yeah, at late. I mean, I don't think he was outside the door. Right. But yeah, yeah, he was the hit. <laughs> and there were people who tried to break in. Yeah, the parents were trying to go mm -hmm. in, and the cops were like, "No, mm -hmm. and we're not going to go in either." I mean, it's it's it's, it's so tragic infuriating at mm -hmm. so many levels. Mm -hmm. and it continues to. Mm -hmm. um, like I hear recently, no one's being found at fault. Well, you know, th there was a recent hearing. I I I, I don't have my facts completely quote me on, but um, it wasn't just the finding, but they had someone just get up in front of the community and read it and then split. No exchange with, with the families. No one got to ask any questions. And so there were, you know, just can you be any more rude and inhuman? Inhuman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because you're speaking to students that were part of always having to. Um, worry about gun violence, correct? Mm -hmm. In school. Yeah. Yeah. This is the generation that yeah, had that yeah. hanging over them. Yeah. Yeah. I ducked and covered. That's how old I am. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, you know, it didn't, it, it wasn't something of, of our, of older generation behavior. It's, it's now though. Yeah, it's and part it's of the, their, their culture, right. part of that, yeah. yeah. We just did the drills for the atomic bomb. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. That's what oh, we did. Oh, yeah, yes. right. That's, that's, that's what, what we did. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, you're going to hide under your desk. Oh, uh, I don't think that's going to say no. Second question, guys? Anybody so? A little bit. Not <laughs> yet. I'm working I on some did. dolls well, currently. Like, I'm just telling it? your husband. <laughs> In the elevator, mine is just a regular quilt, and yours is uh, definitely a work of art. I, I don't quilt, and I but I get it sometimes get in quilt shows. There's a there's a Studio Art Quilt Association that's national, and they have shows, and I'll enter. But even there, most of them know what they're doing as far as quilting, mm -hmm. and they have these just beautiful lines all over everything, and everything's just done so different, and. You know, I thought, how I learned to do this by looking at a video of how to make a pothole. That's all I have <laughs> in, my, in my research of I like that. quilting. Mm -hmm. And I, I had thought in the beginning of, well, maybe it's like, learn to make a quilt. And then I just felt, ah, uh, yeah, but it's just feel it out. Because mm -hmm. that's sort of how I've been taught outside of the classroom. Like, oh, I want to learn how to make sculpture. I need to go back to school and learn it. And I had a friend at the time who wasn't terribly sympathetic to anything, but told me, well, just make it up. You're an artist, make it up. And so, you know, there, there's enough of the rebel in the artist to think, yeah, okay, I'll figure it out. Whatever happens is whatever happens. So that's why the, they're not quilts and you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. but they mostly work because it you know why is it takes at least a month <laughs> yes. and in that time if it's not working I can adjust so it's long enough time period of working to be able to you know fuss with it sometimes I'll have done it and I do want it flat and I put the work up and if it's this head with little tiny arms, right? Well, you can rip rip the threads out and redo the arms. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. it's a kind of forgiving medium, even though it seems like it is. Yeah. 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 Ye
really beautiful. Do you more so sew with a machine or do you hand sew? Only machine. Only machine. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, I wouldn't even want to think about hand sewing all this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even like to. Even There's like one. small details, you just, no, you'd rather do the machine. Mm -hmm. Oh, I only have ever. Do you see that one of Angela Davis? There's a tag hanging down in the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. It got in a quilt show. So I had to oh. do that little hang tag. Yeah. <laughs> and it was stitched on by hand. And it just infuriates no, yeah. me to hold a needle. And <laughs> I just, I get so frustrated with it. Yeah. I no. mean, I you guess. You can learn it. It just is. It's just wrong somehow. So Sitting there for certain and things that are it's definitely <laughs> helpful for, but other things, it's like now just use a machine. Yeah. Yeah, I just use a machine. If it, if the machine can't do it, it doesn't need. It's not, it's to not it. happening. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I think this is just so totally unique. I I never ever saw anything like this. Yeah. Same ever. Here. I mean. Me making my quilt, how long it took me, and I, now I know when you go out to the Amish country, why those quilts oh, are so expensive. Yeah. Because I love them. It's, so yeah, well. and they're mm -hmm. different design, but this is just like, this is off the chart. This is like a whole, a whole life. It's just wonderful. Well, they're now about 40, because I've been doing it since March. Well, I don't count the first couple of months I was learning, but... I would say the first one, which isn't here, but it's the Brianna. It's Brianna Taylor. And she has a haircut. <laughs> she was the first successful piece, and I think that was in June of 2019. So it's now coming on June of 2024. <coughs> so that's making it be five years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And works work right straight through. You kind of get in the groove. I take a week off once in a while. But thank you for sharing. Yeah. Well, thank you. It was very satisfying to have an audience and mm -hmm. interact with and rather than just seeing him in my studio. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.